Hi, I'm Brian Leversey, pastor here at Fellowship Baptist Church in Vienna, West Virginia, and it is so difficult to know if certain things that you're hearing today are actually true. We're beginning a new series here in September called 100% Verified. You see, we believe that you can know who God is, you can know who you are, and you can have a relationship with Him. So join us every Sunday as we worship Him together. You can find out more about how to do that at takemehome.church. We're all on a journey, and we're called to walk by faith. There will always be the mountains and valleys in our way. But right here in this moment, may our strength be renewed as we recall what God has done and how we've seen Him move. If there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, say amen. If there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, Anybody here found joy in the midst of sorrow, peace in the storm, hope for tomorrow. And you've seen it time and time again, just say amen. Sometimes in the darkness, it gets hard to see. So be bold and courageous and follow where he leads. Because greater is the one who's in us than he that's in the world. So child of God, remember the battle is the Lord's. If there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, say amen. If there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, storm hope for tomorrow and you've seen it time and time again just say amen just stand and testify of the greatness of God in our lives if there's anybody here who's found him faithful anybody here Just say
just say understand that God never promised us an easy life, but he did promise that he would never leave us or forsake us. Amen. And how many of you are glad for that promise this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Colossians. This will be our last time, at least for the near future in this book, as far as studying it expositionally, verse by verse through this book of scripture. I've enjoyed this study. I think we need as Christians to really focus in on what a Jesus first life truly means. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that it has touched your heart. I hope it's shaped some of how you follow the Lord. And so I'm excited to close this out today with the truths that we're going to learn. This morning, we're going to learn about a Jesus first conversation. And we're going to look at Colossians chapter number four. Now, we're going to just look at verses two through six, verses seven through the end of the chapter. Paul is concluding his letter to the church of Colossae, and he's He's really recommending and he's recommending that the Church of Colossae pray for and follow certain leaders that have worked with Paul. I'd encourage you to study that on your own. There's some great character studies that you could build out of that. We won't cover it in our expositional study this time around. I may come back to it when we talk about service for our Lord or other issues that I want to cover. The Holy Spirit leads me to cover. But just for this morning, we're going to begin reading with verse number two. So if you're physically able, let's stand together out of respect for the reading of God's word. Colossians 4, we'll start with verse number 2. The Bible says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So this morning we're going to talk about a Jesus first conversation. Let's pray and ask God to help us with this passage. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house this morning. And we're thankful, Lord, that you call us to live a life that's different because, Lord, you filled us with your spirit. You give us the power, you give us the equipping, you give us the calling and the instruction. Lord, also give us a heart of obedience this morning. Help us to be overwhelmed with who you are and passionate in desire to follow you, passionate in desire to please you, passionate in desire to speak of you and to allow our lives to be a message for your grace. So Lord, be with us this morning in a way that only you can. Touch hearts and lives in the ways that you intend. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, as we talk about conversation, how many of you understand that in the times we're living in today, conversation is difficult on many levels to have with people? Let's talk about just the physical levels of having conversation. How many of you are tired of talking to people through a mask? Man, it's just so frustrating because I can't be heard and no one can hear me and I can't hear them. And not only do you have masks on when you're talking to people right now, but every store you go to, they have some kind of glass barrier, like I'm going to pull out an Uzi and start shooting at them or something, you know. And so there's a glass barrier there. And I get it. I understand that these things are happening. But boy, they sure are barriers to conversation, aren't they? And so this morning, we're going to spend some time looking at what a Jesus first conversation looks like. So let's dig into scripture just for a moment this morning. And I want to pull out, first of all, our attention to a conversation with God. In a Jesus first conversation, we must have conversation with God. The communication lines need to be open. Notice what Paul writes here to the church of Colossae. In verse number two, it's almost a command here. In fact, it definitely is in the imperative voice. Notice, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Paul's encouraging this church at Colossae to continue in their conversation, 
to continue to pray to God. Now, if there is any weak point for most Christians, this is the weakest point. It's the point of prayer. We many times are not praying people. We don't dedicate time for prayer. We don't find ourselves engaged in prayer. And when we do pray, we find ourselves not believing it will work. And so a lot of times, all prayer is, is something that makes us feel good about checking a religious checkbox and saying, well, I guess I prayed. And how many of you have prayed those kind of prayers before? I have. How many of you ever prayed? You learned, hey, as I lay my head to sleep, pray the Lord my soul to keep. And I love this part, if I die before I wake. How many of you know that comforts kids right there when you teach them how to pray? If I die before I wake, pray the Lord my soul to take. You know. What is it? We have these kind of rote prayers, and, and if we're not careful, we'll engage with God in, in this kind of prayer life that doesn't have connection, and it doesn't have relationship, and it doesn't make sense to us, and it doesn't make sense to God. And what Paul is encouraging this church with is he's saying, you're in relationship with the king of the universe, with the creator of all things, with the one who has redeemed you from your sin and brought you from darkness into light. Have a conversation with him. How many of you are glad because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can go boldly before the throne of grace to find help in our time of need? Amen. Now, this is the problem, is many times we don't experience that holy communication with him in responsiveness from him to us because we're not praying with a right heart. And James speaks to this in the book of James. Notice with me, if you would, in James chapter 4, verses 2 through 3. You can turn there if you'd like. James chapter 4, verses 2 through 3. I'm going to read this. Notice what James says. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. How many of you know that sounds like our world today? We're compelled by our own lust. We want, we want, we want, we covet, we covet, we covet. Our flesh is insatiable. Everything's about us, and we want every felt need accomplished in our life. And so we're motivated out of our own fleshly lusts and desires many times. And that's what James is rebuking these Christians for. He says this, ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Notice, because ye ask not. Hey, we don't go to God and command him to do things. We go to our heavenly father and ask and petition him for things. Notice what else the Bible says here. You have not because ye ask not. And then when you ask, you receive not because you ask amiss. You ask the wrong way. You miss the mark. It's not connecting. And why isn't our prayer connecting with God? Well, notice why our prayer isn't connecting to God. Because you're praying so that you can consume it upon your own lusts. You're not praying in regard for God's will. You're not praying in regard for God's plan for your life. You're not praying in regard to Scripture and what Scripture says should be in our life. You're praying so that you can just get what you want. You're praying so that you can just have the things that you desire so you can heap it upon your own lust. And James is saying that prayer is not going to be heard or accomplished by God. It's not going to be heard or accomplished by God. So we must be understanding that this communication, this Jesus first conversation has to be done in the right heart and right spirit of relationship with God where we understand him and we know his will. Now look what the Bible says. Look what the Bible says happens when we're walking with God, knowing God, desiring his will and abiding with him. Notice what the Bible says in John 15 verse 7. And by the way, this whole passage in John 15 is talking about abiding with God and Jesus abiding in us. It's close, connective, uh, relationship. Notice what the Bible says here in John 15, 7. John writes, if ye abide in me, these are the words of Jesus, and my words abide in you. Hey, let me point to what that means. If you're in scripture 
and you're putting scripture in your heart, if you're walking with God, if you're desiring his will above all else, if you're passionately in pursuit of him, not your own lusts, not your own desires, not your own flesh, not your own ego, but if you're passionately in pursuit of the God of this universe, notice what happens if you're abiding with him and he's abiding with you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Hey, am I the only one excited about this morning? Are you glad God hears you? And are you glad that God desires to perform his will through your life? What a blessing that is. But we get so discouraged about prayer because we think prayer is a magic lamp where we get into a difficult time or we have something we really want and we go ahead and we loft that thing up to God when we haven't spent time with him during the day, when we haven't spent time with him in his word, when we're not memorizing scripture, when we're not desirous for his will in our life and we're living our own way, desiring our own things, and we expect God to respond to us. No, he's not going to respond to people who are not abiding in him. He's not going to respond to people who have the barrier of sin between them and God. He's not going to respond to people who are operating in the lusts of their flesh. When we go to God, we go to him humbly. We go to him joyfully. We go to him with no reserve and we go to him according to his will. And when we do that, how many of you are glad that he promises us? He promises us that he will respond. And so we find here that there is this expected prayer in our conversation with God. Notice what else Paul tacks on to this in verse number three. With all, that word with all means in concert with, in a like-minded spirit. So as you're praying and as you're continuing in prayer and as you're praying already with thanksgiving because you know you're in God's will and you know what you ask you're going to receive of him because you're praying according to God's will, pray for me. That's what Paul's saying. And how many of you want people praying for you who are walking with God? How many of you want people praying for your surgery who are walking with God and abiding in him? Praying for your finances, praying for your hardship, praying for your difficulty, praying for your victory. We want people who are walking with God. And so Paul is saying, continue in prayer, pray watchfully and expectantly, and then pray that an open door of utterance to speak the gospel, the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. This is part of a Jesus first conversation. And we're not talking about the bowl game with God. And we're not talking about our hobbies with God. We're going to him because there's real battles that are, how many of you know there are real battles going on in our world today? How many of you know that our city needs prayer? How many of you know that our state needs prayer? Our nation needs prayer. Our world needs prayer today. And there are a lot of heavy things that we ought to be praying for on a regular basis. Hey, we got churches being shut down in parts of our country today where there's threats of people going to jail because they're meeting together to just simply do what God has commanded them to do. And they're doing it in a safe way. And they're following all the guidelines. And they're doing the things the way they ought to be doing them. And still there's this pressure and this difficulty. We need prayer today. We need to go to God today. We don't need to be playing God, playing games with God today. We need to be serious about our prayer life today. And Paul says, I want you praying for me. I want you praying that, that God would bless me with utterance and favor and open a door so that I can get the gospel out. Now, now I want you to see this. I want you just for a moment to put yourself in Paul's situation as he asks for this. He's in jail. How many of you know that would severely, severely hamper a lot of your conversations? You're behind bars. You're not going anywhere. You're chained. You're in bonds. You can get some letters out and you can witness to the guards and some of the people that are around you, but you're highly limited in what you're able to do. And how many of you have ever felt highly limited in what you're able to do? Maybe health has highly limited you. Maybe other circumstances have highly limited you and you think, boy, I don't know what I can do for God. I don't know how he could use me. Well, notice Paul's passion. In verse three, he says, I want to preach the gospel. I want to do it effectively. Pray that some doors would be open to me for the opportunity because I'm in bonds as I'm preaching the gospel. That's what he's saying in verse number three. 
You know, Paul wasn't going to allow circumstances to become an excuse for him not to have power with God. Some of us, we run into difficulties and we're almost glad we did because then we can just put up the white flag of, I give up. Well, I can't accomplish anything. Look at my health. I can't do anything for God. Look at my finances. I can't do anything for God. Look at my position. I can't do anything for God. No, no, get some people praying for you. Hey, if you're discouraged, and that's a real thing, by the way. How many of you know? How many of you have been discouraged at least once in these last three months? I, you a bunch of liars. Put your hand up. All right, thank you. We've all been there once in the last three months. We've been in discouragement. We've been in distress. We've been perplexed. We've been confused. We've been angry. We've been upset. We're making decisions based upon these types of things. Hey, instead of making decisions based upon the frustration that wells up in your life, have some good people pray for you. Have some good people go to God for you to help give you favor and to give you focus and to give you connection with God and give you utterance in the place that you're at right now to speak into your family and into your coworkers and into your neighborhood that the doors may be open for you to be a light for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, don't allow those circumstances to become God in your life. How many of you believe God is more powerful than any circumstance we can go through? That's what Paul's praying here. He's saying, hey, you get a hold of God for me. You pray as you're praying expectantly, pray expectantly for me. Pray expectantly that these doors will be open. And we as, as family in Christ, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we ought to be praying for each other. We ought to be praying for each other's needs and concerns and, and, and favor and open doors and opportunities. This is part of that conversation with God. We pray to God expectantly. We pray to God concerning his ministry for others, we pray to God. Now, we transition here in the next few verses from our conversation to God to our conversation with men. Our conversation with men. Notice with me verse number five. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Now that word walk speaks to our behavior. That's another term for conversation. Conversation in Scripture can be our verbal conversation with people, but it also typifies our behavior before people. And our walk is important. How many of you know the way we act is so important? And Paul begins with this. Hey, walk, Church of Colossae, in wisdom. Walk in the Word of God. Walk in the truth of God. How many of you understand that in the world that we live in today that's dazed and confused and frustrated, it doesn't take much to have wisdom? I mean, just some good old-fashioned common sense Amen. will win the day a lot of times today, let alone hiding God's Word in your heart and reading God's Word and being passionate about God's Word. We need to walk in that wisdom. Walk in wisdom. And then who are we walking for? Well, obviously for God, but also for those that are without. Those that are without mean those who do not know Christ. Those are with, who are without the church. Those who are outside the church. Walk in wisdom before them. Now, now listen, I understand we're very polarized in our culture today. We get riled up real easy. But even Christian, I know you have the truth. And you know that you're right in God's word if you're following God's word. How many of you understand you don't have to be mean even though you're right? You don't have to be mean even though you're right. How many of you are glad Jesus didn't look like he was mean except that the religious people who wanted to entrap him and ensnare him all the time? Then he flipped over some tables, which, by the way, is one of my favorite parts of Scripture. How many of you just get a little excited when you read that passage, right? But Jesus, he, he walked before the sinners as the Son of God, and he loved them, and he preached to them, and he healed them, and he displayed love and grace and mercy. And so our walk is so important. So he says, hey, we need to walk in wisdom toward those that are without. That's part of this conversation with men. Redeeming the time. Hey, make good use of your time. Arguing with people probably isn't a very good use of your time. Getting frustrated with people is probably not a very good use of your time. You know, I don't want to stand before God in heaven one day giving an account of my time on earth and say, well, I argued real good with this guy and I really ticked this guy off. And boy, I got a good point over on this guy. And then this guy, I just shredded. Wah, 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 wah. Man, I laid this person out, man. Look, they didn't even get back up again. 
And I don't think that Jesus is going to look at me and be like, oh, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so we need to be very careful. Redeem the time. Be wise in the way we walk. Be wise in the way that we converse with others. Notice Paul continues with this. Verse number six, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So there's some seasoning that should go into our words. This should convict all of us right now. How many of you found yourself in the last three months saying something that probably if Jesus was around, you wouldn't have said? You've gotten frustrated. You let it out. Hey, if you've watched even one political commercial, you've sinned, okay? <laughs> you can't help it. Listen, I just want you to know many times we just, we have no filter. How many of you have said something and wish you could have gotten them back before? Just, it's out there. And as we work with others, as we walk before others, as we minister the grace of God to others, we need to make sure that our speech is full of grace. It still needs to be impactful, still needs to be salty, not salty in the way that <laughs> sailors are salty with their speech, but salty in the sense that it, it, it affects those that we're talking to. It's, it's seasoned with the word of God. It has that bearing of truth that can impact hearts and lives. So... Let's make sure that our conversation with men is one that concerns the gospel, is one that's seasoned with grace and salt, is one that reflects admirably the Lord Jesus Christ. How's your conversation? As we conclude our study through Colossians today, a Jesus first conversation is gonna be very active and very lively and very full of an abiding with God as we pray to him. It's gonna be watchful, it's gonna be expectant as we pray to him. And then toward men, our conversation will be wise. It will be filled with the word of God. It will be on display in our actions. And it will be full of grace and seasoned with salt. How's your conver hey, how's your conversation with your husband been? How's your conversation with your wife been? How's your conversation with your children been? How's your conversation with that neighbor or that coworker been? Is it that which would reflect the fact that you're living a Jesus first life. Let's all stand this morning with our heads bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around.